So again, welcome in. Uh, my name is Erin, if you haven't guessed already by the name Erin Bun Paints. Uh, thanks for coming again to my little painting tutorial here. Um, what we'll be doing today is painting this beautiful wave step by step. That's the idea. You can have a look at this final painting here. If you want to take a quick screenshot, feel free. Uh, just know this is also on Instagram. It's also on Facebook in the event banner photo. So if you need to have a nice digital version to look at, you can do that. Uh, but mainly what I'll be doing is actually painting along with you. So I will bring this up and down as I paint. However, you'll mostly be watching me paint on this so that you can see everything step by step. It'll be a little bit easier to explain, obviously, um, if I'm able to show it to you, of course, rather than verbally, <laughs> as we've all learned. Uh, the paint colors I'm using today, we have four different paint colors. We have red, yellow, phthalo blue, and white. So you can get those ready if you haven't. You can either pour them out now or just as I go. Either one works. And then the paint brushes I have, we have three. I always stick to about three or less. We have the large flat brush, I have a medium round brush, and a small round brush as well. Otherwise, materials you might need, you might need a cup of paint water, I always recommend. Uh, maybe a towel or some paper towel, hopefully you have a paint palette of some kind, and hopefully you're wearing clothing that you don't mind getting maybe a little bit messy, because it might get a little messy, who knows. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so I'm going to go ahead with the first step here. Again, if there's any questions, just uh, throw them in the chat as I go, and I'll do my best to keep track. First step, everybody. You can grab your large flat brush. Give it a dip in your water. And we're going to mix together our background color to begin with. So I did a nice uh, kind of gradient in the background. You can't see a whole lot of it, but we are going to do um, starting just kind of below the top here and moving down just because everyone's wave might be a little bit different. So we're going to start with kind of an orangey color and then I'll blend down into a nice kind of golden yellow and eventually a little bit of light yellow at the bottom. So you can take your large flat brush. You can mix together red with just a little bit of yellow because we're starting with a nice bright vibrant orange. Now go to your plate here. I'll show you my plate in a second. I'll introduce my plate one minute because my plate needs introductions because it's such an outrageous plate of paint. Kaz, you're full of great ideas. You, you really know all this stuff that's been swirling in my brain recently. <laughs> I plan to do that. I plan to do a lot of things with that trailer. Thank you though. It's a good idea. So again, lots of red, little yellow. I will, Kelly, yes. I'm gonna teach the first step to set us off and I'm happy to introduce the volcano plate. So this is the volcano plate. I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Just know that we wanna begin here. So we're gonna start by going left and right back and forth with this reddish orange color. Um, you'll notice that I'm not going to the very top and that's because I'm expecting that the very top is gonna to be covered with our wave. So rather than wasting paint, we're gonna start a little lower but I'm still being generous with how high up I'm starting. I wanna make sure there's no gaps. So I am starting, you know, maybe like four fingers down, roughly. No measuring tapes here, just fingers and stuff. We're going left and right, back and forth, and we're bringing it down just a little bit. It's just kind of like a strip of this reddish orange color. <clears throat> Kelly, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> I know you're excited to see it. Uh, no worries, Christy. Always fun when you're just watching too. So I'm just bringing this down a little bit lower because again, I like it kind of peaking a little bit below the wave there. You can kind of see it there. There we go. So again, that's just a couple fingers. We did a couple, like four fingers down, about four fingers in uh, width for the uh, the width of the orange streak there. If you want it a little lower, maybe you, uh, you're you worried that it'll be covered by your wave, you could bring it as low as you want. Uh, but I kind of keep this a little higher up so it's mostly golden yellow that ends up showing through the wave. So yes, the volcano plate for those wondering. We literally had requests to introduce the volcano plate today, so here it is. Uh, this is a plate I've used for about five years solid now, and uh, it's just only acrylic paint on here. It started just as a regular paper plate, maybe you can see it down here. Uh, and what happened was the paint kept drying, I kept piling it on and piling it on, and it was just really because I didn't want to keep throwing out plates every time, I just wanted to use the same one, and it kind of turned into a volcano. 
uh, yeah, that's that's what it is. It's a volcano plate. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, I guess, and uh, welcome in volcano plate as usual. And if you're on uh, Twitch right now, you actually have a volcano plate emote to use. It's the hype emote. So there you go. A lot of you found it already. Mm hmm. Mama can't wait for this. Off Ooh, Friday, Friday. Old Pink Whitney. No, not a new one. Still haven't started a new one. It's the same old volcano plate. Don't worry. I feel like I need to start a new one soon, guys, because honestly, it's very, very heavy. But uh, for now, it lives on. Cool. <laughs> All right, we'll do a quick minute more just in case anybody is still uh, still painting along, and then we'll uh, get to the next step. Liesel, hi! Love the plate. Thanks. Have you never seen this thing? Did you not see it when you were over? Oh my god, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the freaking volcano plate, yes. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't show this to you. This thing weighs a ton. It's a five-year-old plate. You know, we've painted a long time for, for our time, right? Five plus years. It's the same plate every time I painted a painting. Yep. <laughs> Can't believe you've seen it. Oh my gosh. Swear it got big. It gets bigger every time, CJ. It gets bigger every time. I seriously can't believe it that it still continues. That's why I need to start a new one. It's uh, it's almost time. It's almost time. I'll let you guys know when it happens. It's gonna be a big thing, I think. It's gonna be the big thing. <laughs> you need to cut it in half and use it as bookends. People want it cut in half to see what it looks like inside. I don't know how I feel about it. I think I wanna do it, but we'll see. All right, guys, so we're gonna move right ahead. Uh, so we're going to go down a little bit more we're going to do more of this golden yellow color now. So we're going to, I'll teach you how to blend it into the reddish orange. And we're going to bring this uh, kind of golden yellow about halfway down. You can see it goes about halfway down. So you can use the same brush and you honestly don't need to wash it because we're just going to use a little bit of red anyway for the golden yellow. You just use whatever's left here. As long as there's no big blobs of paint, I would just maybe wipe it off a little. You don't really need to wash it off though. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of swirl it into some yellow. You can grab a teeny bit of red if you need, but again, the goal is that we're making kind of a golden yellow color. Gold, golden yellow, yes. So it's like just when it starts to turn a little more orangey, that's pretty much the color you're looking for, a nice golden yellow. So to blend, what I like to do is I like to do the blending first. So I'm going to be going back and forth, left and right. I start kind of a little below but then what I start to do is I stroke in between, in between. So I'm trying my best to actually have my brush touch that orangey color, mixing as I go back and forth. There we go. And that's what blends them together. So blending just gives a nice smooth transition so you don't have like a block of color and then a block of color. You wanna just casually coming down a nice ombre look, lots of words for it. And then whenever you've got that blended, you can continue this color down. I think I said about halfway. Yeah, so right around there. And I will be adding one more color after that. So if you think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit above halfway, if maybe it's not perfectly straight, all of that can be fixed with our last color. But same thing, I'm just stroking left and right, back and forth. And that's still that golden yellow color. Whoops, I am grabbing a little bit of red by accident. Let's get that out of there. If that ever happens to you, you can always just blend it out. So sometimes my plate, of course, I just showed you the volcano plate. It gets a little messy. Sometimes I grab the wrong color, but if you just spot, pile on some more color, so I'm piling on some yellow, it kind of mixes in, turns to that golden yellow I was originally looking for, and then all is right in the world. All is right in our surfing world there. Uh, just as an extra note, you can definitely paint along the edges of the canvas too as you go along. Um, I do not, only because I like to pick up the painting and I just don't want to, uh, you know, paint up my palm every time I touch it. So you can do that if you like, but you won't see me doing it. But it does help complete the whole painting. So if you'd like to do that, I would recommend it. Nope, I haven't seen it, but it's epic. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, if I had known you didn't see it or... Uh, didn't know what it was, I would have uh, told you to pick the thing up because it's freaking heavy. I just want people to know how heavy it is. Um, people underestimate its weight and I wish I could weigh it, but I don't have a scale here. So anyway, volcano plate's cool. Thanks, Sherry. Teresa, when you're done with it, you should weigh it. I know, I agree. Oh, that's a good idea. Have everyone guess. Shazali, welcome in, welcome in. 
That's a good idea though. Kind of like guessing the number of gumballs in a jar type contest. That'd be a lot of fun. Guess the exact weight. I think that'd be a lot of fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, I do kind of want to cut it in half. I also just don't want to kill the volcano plates. So I don't know what I'll do, Pink Whitney. We'll see. <laughs> Brittany, I feel like I met a celebrity because I held the plate. Yes, Brittany came to my free painting giveaway and I brought the plate with me because people knew uh, that I could do that and they requested I bring the plate with me and Brittany was able to hold it and weigh it. So yes, yeah, she met she met the celebrity, the plate. <laughs> this thing will be walking the red carpet in a year. Hold me to it. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, bookends, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> Everyone's like, I want to hold it. <laughs> golden, golden yellow. Yes. Yeah, it's the plate. What are we going to write? Yeah, pink wing. I'll think about it. I think that's a really fun idea and I want to maybe give away something if you guess it right. I think that would be a lot of fun. If you guys have more ideas in terms of what I can do with that, let me know. I, I just want to make it a big event if uh, something ever happens to the volcano plate or I start a new one. I think it would be a lot of fun. So that's just an extra thing we can do. Weigh it, guess the weight, whatever. Kegs or pounds? Uh, I don't know. Whatever you want. <laughs> Lisa, whatever you feel. I'll convert if you need. Joe, welcome in. Hello, hello, hello. I know. I don't know if I'm ready either to do it. Win a painting. Yeah, see, that could be something as easy as that. Win a painting if you guess the right one. Just display till you're ready is definitely a statement piece. I agree. Paint it, says Lisa Alaska. That's funny. Easy solution. Cut it in half. Take a look and then travel back in time. Easy. Easy. I've looked into that myself. Okay, uh, that was a good little bit. Let's uh, move on down a little bit. So you can see down here, I do just a tiny bit of light yellow. The reason I don't do more is because I want light yellow for my nice sunshine here, right? So I don't wanna make too much light yellow in the background or else it's not gonna pop off. So just a teeny bit, just to get a little bit of a lighter color right in the middle here. So I would recommend washing off your brush at this point, just cause we're about to use a nice clean light yellow. Easy, Groke, easy. <laughs> By the way, I'm just watching tonight. No worries, Lynn. Good thing I brought my time machine, right? Get the crystals. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna use my clean, large flat brush with yellow and white. Yellow and white. And I do mix a little white in it because I find it brightens up the yellow and if your yellow is like anything like mine, the yellow is very transparent and thin. So adding a little bit of white will really help uh, brighten it up and really make it uh, nice and opaque on the canvas. So that's why I mix a little bit of white in there. Okay. And again, we're just putting this on the very bottom. So we're still about halfway, maybe a little lower than half at this point, but not much. And we're just doing a small little strip of light yellow to really show that it's nice and light right at the horizon line. And of course, blending that into the golden yellow. So again, blending involves wiping back and forth in between the two colors to get a nice smooth transition. There we go. Um, my yellows are extra thick. That's what uh, that's what Life was saying today during our collab. She was saying hers were quite thick. And I was like, jealous. That sounds like quality paint. <laughs> I have the academic acrylics, so some of them are a little bit thinner. But interesting, you both say that. You both say that. Can't forget the crystals. <laughs> exactly, CJ. Claire is just watching. No worries, Claire. Yeah, if anyone's just watching, that's no worries at all, guys. No worries at all. That's what I do with Bob Ross. Um, I don't usually paint along with him. I've only painted along once with him as in a little challenge. Um, but otherwise I just, uh, I like to just watch and relax. So if this is relaxing for you or just entertaining in any way, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> Rebel didn't wash my brush. <laughs> uh, had someone slice it in pieces and saw the shape of it. Oh my gosh. Cindy, you're thinking like next level stuff here. Cindy's saying, uh, what about you slice it into small pieces, uh, make them into shapes and then sell them, uh, seal them with a clear acrylic and make jewelry out of them. Wow, for your tribe to purchase. I love how you're part of the tribe. Um, I mean, maybe, I just, I don't even know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it, but these are all amazing ideas. Is Life also using heavy body acrylic? She was using, um, I don't know if it was technically heavy body Todd. It was the, I think she likes to stick to the Liquitex basics, which I know is thicker than mine. So there you go. 
Probably something more similar to yours rather than similar to mine, yeah. I know, it's a great idea. See, and people are saying, oh, I'd, I'd grab a piece, yeah. Everyone can have a piece of the volcano plate. It's like that crown from Mean Girls. You have a piece, you have a piece, you have a piece. A piece for Gretchen Wieners, etc. <laughs> okay. Looking back at the painting, so we've done the nice background here, so we're not gonna go any further down here because the rest is just the wave. So all we need to do now is do the bottom of the wave and kind of curl it around, right? So what I did when I was uh, constructing this wave, what did I do? Did I start on the blues or the yellows? You can start with either, of course. I think I started with the blues though. Oh no, no, I did uh, sketch it out, so let's do that. <laughs> Great job, Aaron. Great job. I'm going to sketch it out a little bit first just to get the general shape going, and then I'm going to go in with the colors. So just so we can see where the curl is, how far it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be doing that first, okay? So let's make a nice uh, light blue to begin with. Very, very light blue because we don't want it to show through a whole lot. This is just to give the general shape of the wave to get comfortable with the curl itself, and then we can go in with all the different colors. So medium round brush, I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm going to this medium round. This is a six round if you're curious, but it can be any medium round brush. And I'm using lots of white with a little bit of blue. Tara, love Mean Girls, the movie that, oh, I know what you mean, don't worry. I love girls who are mean, no, no, no. I love making Mean Girls references so you'll fit right in. <laughs> a piece for Gretchen Wieners. All right. So I have a very, very pale blue. It's actually a little bit of a purple. You can use any pale color you like, it doesn't matter. I'm just using this to kind of sketch out my wave. So I like to just go along the bottom here just to kind of get used to that. The wave's kind of coming across or at least the uh, horizon line is. And then I would say it's like three quarters of the way across. We start to just kind of curve up. And if this mixes with your yellow, you can see it kind of is with mine, that's okay. The main point of this is just to get the general shape so you're comfortable with the shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. This will just kind of help you see the wave before it really comes together. So I'm doing a quick little curl around, kind of like a nice C curve almost, just all the way around like this. So leaving a nice open space in your sunset area. And I'm going to complete the C curve pretty quickly, so it's going to kind of dip down like this. So we're gonna get a little bit of a splash a little bit. It's kind of like the water, you know how a wave goes. Some of it's kind of splashing down quickly. Some of it's going further over. And we just wanna really show that. So we've got a quick C curve. We're gonna do a couple more curves kind of coming further out just to show how it kind of curls around. So I'm just continuing to use, trying to use that light blue color, but again, it's kind of mixing. So it might look a little gray toned or something different. Just doing quick little curves coming down to the right. And you can see as I move further along, I like to bring them down a little bit further because the waves are probably crashing a little bit more on the outside. They've curled a little bit more versus the ones on the inside are a little more fresh. So they're a little bit higher up. So again, just to compare, you can kind of see that happening here, how it comes down. Right? So I'm just trying to signify that to begin with before we start to add our darker colors. So that's really all you need here. I'll just give you a minute or two. Just again, this is really just to get comfortable with how far over the colors are coming, where they're going. It'll be a lot easier now that we have this little general sketch to look at and to uh, be comfortable with. Yeah. But yeah, Tara, I'm glad you caught the reference. Sometimes I wonder if the references fly over heads and that's okay if they do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like making my little movie references and stuff here and there. <clears throat> so many ideas talk about being spoiled by choice, dude. If only I had more time. <laughs> uh, Todd, I do, uh, I mean, I do love Liquitex Basics. It's a great brand. It's a great brand and uh, yeah, it's a great brand. That's all I need to say. <laughs> Chappie, have you been streaming all day? I've been streaming since about 2 p.m. Uh, five hours in here. I'll be streaming for another hour or two. Two hours probably, yeah. How about whoever guesses the weight wins the volcano? Oh my gosh. I don't know though. Two birds with one stone, you get rid of the volcano. Dude, I don't want to get rid of the volcano though. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Cough shipping. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it would be so much to ship. What if someone across the world around the world one, that'd be such the shipping cost, but I don't know, worth it probably. Canada Post sucks for shipping. Ooh, <laughs> the shade to Canada Post, oh dear. It's just expensive to ship outside of any country, I feel, so yeah, just exactly. Shipping is uh, tough in general sometimes. I agree, I think I should keep it somehow, somehow. 
at least a piece, you know? I want a piece too. Exactly, I agree on the shelf. I think that's good. Thanks, Joe, I'm glad you like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just so everyone can see it, exactly. And then Kimberly, oh, you're the best. Oh, thank you, thank you for always taking your time for us to learn, you're very welcome. We really appreciate you and all your time. Hey, Kimberly, thanks so much for saying that. It's really kind of you. Uh, you're always very welcome. You're always welcome. Thank you. Um, Shradley, excellent presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs> a presentation. This is a PowerPoint presentation. Welcome in. <laughs> but thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I assume you've had enough time to do the outline. So let's get to some beautiful colors. So I did start with the blue. I thought a little more about it. I wanted to make sure I was doing it the exact same way. Blue was the beginning color. Sometimes I make these paintings. I literally made it last week and I already forget which order I did, but point is you can do it any order. I did start with blue, okay? So we're gonna do some dark blue, uh, both at the bottom and on the top. You can see that I do kind of a rainbow, but it goes kind of back and forth. It goes blue, green, yellow, then the oranges and reds, yellow, green, blue, and we put in some purple as well, but we start with a blue base. So let's actually switch brushes to the large flat brush. Do, 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 do. Uh, Poot Lori, I'll answer your question in just a quick second for you. I'll get you, I'll get you. Um, where's the blue? Too far away is the answer. I'm gonna mix my blue with just a tiny bit of white just to brighten it up a tiny, tiny bit. It's going to be a more dark blue. What I do is I stack on lighter colors later. But for now, I am using my large flat brush and grabbing a little bit of white, mixing into a large pile of blue. Okay, so let's start at the bottom. You can start at bottom or top. It really doesn't matter if you're comfortable with kind of, you know, doing your own thing, you can do that. I noticed I grabbed a bit of black by accident there, so I'm just remixing. That's better. That's more the blue I'm looking for. And you can see I'm just sweeping it across. So I'm not worried about getting like individual lines right now. These are all just kind of the base colors. And the idea is we're gonna do all of the base colors as our nice background. And then we'll put on the waves on, not the waves on top, kind of the ripples, um, the water texture you could think of it as, we'll put that all on top. So for now, just wiping back and forth, left and right. And I'm bringing this, yeah, about a quarter to a third of the way across, anywhere in there. I would say the blue section is pretty big compared to a lot of the others, because of course we're doing some waves. I like to stick with the blue, but then we'll rainbow it up. And Diving Yak, I'm sorry if I missed you for the follow there, welcome in. My alerts are not on because I'm doing a tutorial. So if you're still here, thank you for the follow, that was a while ago, but thank you, I do appreciate it. <laughs> Um, you can see I'm moving to the top and the top I'm just kind of following along again the sketch we did so I want to make sure my brush strokes are following the wave here so the wave is curling around my brush strokes are also curling around uh, the blue I would say I bring definitely on the right hand side here kind of in the corner Ah, oh, excuse me, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go along the top here. Glad I was able to turn away and not sneeze right into the microphone for you guys. That would have been uh, a time. Uh, and I'm also bringing it along the top edge. So I'm kind of going all the way to the left, just kind of curling around. So once again, doing that nice curve just to follow the shape of the wave. And I will kind of bring a little more in here too. So again, just the base for now. We don't need to worry about all those nice lines that I had on my wave. We're gonna add those later, just kind of stacking them on later. Just the base for now. You don't even need to worry about how this is looking in here. It can be nice and messy and thick, and that's okay. Uh, speaking of that, I know Poo, uh, Poot Lori was saying, how long have you been painting? Uh, good first question. Uh, my, uh, my answer is, as long as I can remember, I would say more seriously, like six or seven years, but honestly, Poot Lori, it's been like my whole life. Um, I've been painting as long as I can remember and have loved it the whole time. It's just been a hobby my whole life, essentially. Turned into a career and now I'm here. Um, and is it okay if the sketch of the wave is thick? Yes, that's no problem at all. Um, we'll be kind of prettying it up a little bit later. We'll be adding all of the individual strokes and kind of like doing all these little lines a little later. So if right now the outline is thick, as you see mine, that's no problem at all. It's all good. 
Mm-hmm. I'm just double checking. Yeah, I'd say that's about it for the blue. But yeah, following along just like this. Okay, so I'll give everyone a minute or two. You can let me know if you're ready to move on. I'm just gonna give my nose a quick blow because I did just sneeze and I just, anyway, <laughs> one sec. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, Volcano Plate deserves to live, yes. Aaron's the best. Thank you, Charlene. Don't break the streamer. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Poop, you say? Oh, man. Have a good week holiday, and I'll see you later on Twitch. Oh, you're welcome, Lynn. And I, um, I, I announced earlier, I might actually not be going away this week. Uh, some things have changed. Um, I will update every, and that goes for everybody listening. Um, I just posted my schedule pretty much on all my social medias recently in terms of my streaming hours. Uh, and you may have noticed there was quite the gap in the week and that was because I was planning on visiting family, um, but some things have changed. So I might not be doing that this week. Um, I don't think I am. I'm pretty confident I'm not. <laughs> so I'll be posting up a new schedule soon, just in case anyone is interested in watching me on Twitch throughout the week. Uh, the tutorials stay the same because there wasn't one until Friday anyway, but if anyone was wanting to watch me stream in between there, um, then I'm going to be posting a new schedule either tonight or tomorrow once I've kind of figure out what's going on. I won't be streaming tomorrow for sure, but I might be Tuesday and Wednesday, so you can maybe look out for that. Uh, but thanks, Lynn, for thinking of that anyway. Uh, the vacation will probably be next week. Vacation. It'll be like visiting my parents next week, probably. But yes, thank you for the bless you. Sneezing ASMR. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> We can't, we can't change too much here on this channel. We can't move around too much. Lynn, take care. Thanks, and you too. Yeah, maybe I'll see you sooner than we think. We'll see. All right. Assuming everyone's good to go. Again, you're welcome to let me know if you think I'm going way too fast or way too slow. I try and do the best I can for everybody, but if we have lots of opinions, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm going to be moving into some greens now. So I do a nice kind of dark to light green, and that's on, again, both sides both sides. So I'll try my best to blend a little bit. If it doesn't blend perfectly, that's okay because we put so many of these kind of ripples and textures on top uh, that it does kind of cover up things like, uh, you know, blending, blending issues. You could say if you have issues with blending or if things are a little bit choppy in here, you get choppy waters. It's cool. Okay. So we're going to keep using the large flat brush. You can wash it off whenever you're ready. Oh, something is, oh boy, I had fresh paint there. I've been just dipping my hand into the paint there. Nice. Um, I'll be mixing together yellow and blue, yellow and blue. Do, 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 do. You can visit me too. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually not going to your hometown. I'm going somewhere else, dude. <laughs> If I was though, I'll call you up. <laughs> Why does my wave look like a claw already though? I mean, mine kind of looks messy too. And I remember that when I was making this, um, it looked a little messy before I did all the little water splatters too. So as usual, trust the process. You'll see at the end how it comes together. Not even the end, just like when we start to do the second layers, but <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a nice green here. It's kind of like a medium to dark green. Um, if you feel like yours is looking very light, that just means you need a little bit more blue in there. So you can kind of mix more blue in, but I'm liking the color of mine here. And whenever you're ready, you can just start adding that beside your blue. Bum, 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 bum. So we're gonna go like this, stroking left and right, back and forth. Again, you can see I'm pretty messy with it. I'm not too worried about perfect blending, perfect transitions. I'm just sticking this in here. I would say this is about, yeah, in the halfway area. And to blend, I'm just going to purposely make sure that I'm moving left and right back and forth into the blue. You can see things like maybe there's a little bit of a line there. That's okay. Maybe there are some brush strokes, you know, but all of that will be covered up later. So you truly, truly, truly don't have to worry about it. If it's driving you nuts, you can use a little more pressure to try and get rid of that line. You can see kind of like moving your brush like this kind of helps remove it and then you can smooth it out again. But again, we're going to be doing lots of layering on top. This is just the base layer. So yeah, you can see just lightly blended by sweeping back and forth into the blue and then having a nice green section here. And 
I'm also going to do a little bit of green up here as well. So same thing, kind of bordering where the blue is and bringing it down a little bit. I just need to mix a little more pink here. And same thing, I'm just making sure up here, I'm definitely following this kind of curve motion just to follow the movement of the wave. And I'm going again below the blue, but I'll also streak a little into the blue so that we have a nice uh, slightly blended area. I'll keep saying it, it doesn't need to be the perfect transition or the perfect blend, but it does help to blend a little bit. So just going back and forth in that curve motion to help move those two colors together. Um, I'll point it out because I can see it in the camera there. I can see kind of a line where my red started. Again, not a problem because we will be layering on so many other colors. Things like that will disappear. So in the meantime, just focus on the nice green base. I'll give you a quick minute or two and then we'll go on to the next color. We're just going in rainbow order for those wondering. Aaron's resume just expanding through Twitch. Aaron Bun paints plays, fixes <laughs> It'll never end, will it, Kaz? Yeah, the builds, I know. Oh, I thought you said that one. Right now I'm Aaron Bun tech support on Twitter. Tech support. <laughs> Jev, <clears throat> hi, greetings from the Philippines. Welcome in, wow. I just wanna ask what basic skill that I need to be able to paint? This will be my first time, thanks. Jev, you don't need to have, you, you don't, <laughs> how do I word this? Oh my goodness, I'm stuttering. You don't um, need to have any painting experience whatsoever. Those are the words I was looking for. Um, honestly, it could be your very first time painting. My whole goal with these tutorials, Jev, is that anybody can pop in uh, no matter what skill level. Some people have been painting with me the whole time I've been doing this for the past few months, uh, some beyond that as well, and others have been just like you. Maybe they've never painted before. Maybe the last time they painted was kindergarten and they're like, finger painting, whatever. Um, that's why I'm going through everything step by step. It's why I keep all the supplies to a minimum. I only use the five paint colors for today actually, and just minimal supplies because I'm hoping that anybody who wants to join in can. So there you go. Yeah. Really no basic skill. Just, just uh, your materials and that's really all. <laughs> Colleen, hi, hope to see your rerun. Oh yes, you will. It'll be uh, it'll be immediately on Facebook after this and then eventually on YouTube. And hello, Vivian, welcome in. Uh, I lost the dark orange under my wave. Oh no, oh, that's okay. Um, Brittany, you could add a little more if you want, but I'm even actually looking at this one. There's even less here. You can see it's barely popping in versus up here. I have a little more and I think it will be covered up when I add my little splish flashes. But um, yeah. Just so you know, it's really up to you. You can re-add it if you want, or you can just say, nah, that's the way it is. It's a happy accident. It's a little more of a nice golden yellow sunset today. Uh, Pimage, uh, I started taking your painting classes mid-July. There you go. So pretty new still. I mean, that's about a month and a half. I had to look at the calendar to figure that out, even though September is like in two days. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, everyone's of different skill levels here. Bless you, Erin. Oh, thanks, Christy. Thank you. <laughs> Uh oh, too bad you can't control Z, right? Yep, yeah, that's the, uh, <laughs> I wish. Digital art, you can control Z. Painting, you can't do the control Z, the undo function, you can't do it. All right, we've got our green, everybody, so let's move on to the yellow. So the yellow is actually what we use to complete the rest of this area here. Uh, you can see we don't have a pink or an orange base. What I did instead is I just added small little uh, strokes on top for the pink and orange. So if you're wondering where those colors end up, they will be later. For now, we're just using yellow to connect everything. So we'll use yellow in the middle and then it kind of creates a nice light green as well as we blend it. So I washed off my brush again. Still using the large flat brush. And I'll be mixing once again yellow with a little bit of white. Um, I think I went over at the start, but just in case, um, I mix yellow with a little bit of white so that it brightens up a little bit. And so it becomes a little more opaque. I find yellow paint to be transparent without the white. So that's why I'm doing that. Mixing lots of yellow, a little bit of white, hopefully with no blue by accident there. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Trying 
trying to keep it oh, as clean as possible. That was a little dab of paint that flew off, but that's okay. There's a carpet on the floor, not a carpet. There's a towel on top of the carpet, so it's gonna catch it. Thank goodness. So you can see I'm filling in the remainder of the gaps here with this yellow slash super light green, if maybe a little bit of blue gone in here and that's okay. <laughs> Once again, following the shape of the wave, and it does not have to be super clean, it's just generally the shape here. You can see it doesn't even match up perfectly here, and that's okay. But I like to apply the color and then I'll blend it because the yellow, it's a very light color, so I find it useful to kind of apply it first, get it on as clean as possible. And then you do your blending. So by blending, I just mean going back and forth, left and right in between your two colors. So in between the green and yellow, again, you can use a little bit more pressure to help kind of rub in between, kind of get the colors moving and then brushing in between to help blend them together. So you can see, again, back and forth, you can kind of drag the green into the yellow, yellow into the green, a little bit of both. And again, if it's not looking perfect, that's totally fine. I'll keep repeating it because I know it's always a worry in people's minds and for, especially for this painting, this is just the base layer. We'll be doing lots on top, lots on top. Doing the same thing up here. So again, going with the curve, it's kind of curving up this time bringing the green down a little into the yellow and then the opposite as well. And that just allows for a nice base. So again, I'll give you a minute or two at least just to uh, just to kind of cover that part there. Um, again, I'll point out how my wave is not quite the exact C shape I want. I'll have lots of opportunity when I'm adding all of my lovely colors on top to uh, create all the nice little splashes and kind of clean up the shape wherever I need to go. Mm-hmm. Jimena, I'm late. Oh, <laughs> Jimena, if I can help you catch up, just please let me know. But also know that the video is available right after I'm done. So I'll probably be done uh, in another hour and a bit, um, hour and a half, let's say. Uh, you can pop back on Facebook and watch the video all the way through, pause on the way if you need, uh, and it'll all be available for you. So just so you know. Uh, Sandy, hello from Keswick. Hello to you too. Hello to you too. Do, 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 do. Um, hi, pipe, hi, pipe. <laughs> Want some fika? Bob quote, this is a happy place. Little squirrels live here and play. Mm, Bob, I'm not sure if little squirrels would live in the wave, but you know, maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe they're surfing on the surfboard. Who knows? Psycho, wish I was at the beach. Me too, man. Me too. Although I love being here. Beach sounds pretty nice too. Bob quote, didn't you know that you had that much power? You can move mountains. You can do anything. It's true, Bob. Thank you. Bob is so inspirational with his quotes. All right, just giving another quick minute. I know that was the last step in terms of the uh, base. So just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We're all caught up and then uh, we can get to adding some more colors here. I'll uh, bring this up if you want to compare and contrast so far. So hopefully you can see the general shape coming together. General base right there. Sandy from Spongebob would be in the wave. If I could go back to Texas, this place is not... Oh, I can't do it. For a squirrel, want my 20 acres. Da -na 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 -na. Oh no. Da -na 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 -na. I'll always be a Texas girl. Beach for me tomorrow. Charlene and Joy. I have no yellow. Evil wave. Oh boy. You'll do like cool tones then. You can do like blues, purples. You can go red. More of the cool tones anyway for the wave, I think. That'd be all right. Evil wave. <laughs> all right. Hopefully we've had a good look. Hopefully we're all caught up. I think we're going to go on to our next few steps here. Um, so next, we're actually going to do the island next. I like to do the island and the uh, the sunshine next that we can wait for this base to dry a little bit so we get a little bit of cleaner strokes. Um, we don't really uh, blend a whole lot um, on top of the base, I guess, but we just blend the new colors together. So it's actually better to leave it to be a little bit more dry. So let's go on to, let's do the little palm trees next. 
We can do either, but let's do the palm trees. Uh, so for the palm trees, I would actually recommend switching down to the small brush here. So if you have any teeny tiny brushes, that would be a good one to use. And we're just doing a quick little island here just to kind of spice up the horizon line a bit, just so it's not completely empty. The color I'll be using is just a nice dark purple. So you can mix red and blue together. Red and blue, I would do about equal amounts. It'll turn out to be a very nice dark purple. And that's what I'm looking for for my painting. If you'd rather have a lighter purple, you can mix some white in there. Oh, McDonald says, bless you, thank you. <laughs> will you put this on YouTube? Yes, Michelle. It might be a day or two before it's on YouTube, but in the meantime, it will stay on Facebook. So if you're looking to paint it in the next like 48 hours, you can check it out here on Facebook. And uh, otherwise it will be on YouTube soon after. It's always one place or the other. It's never missing. So just so you know that. Brown Island, because I don't want to use the last of my blue and red. No worries. Yeah, brown. You can even do black if you want. Um, I stayed away from black just to keep with like the rainbow theme, but it's really up to you. So again, that was red and blue as a reminder. And I'm just going to start by going about, I would say a third of the way. Yeah, that's about a third of the way across. And I just start with a nice little thin line and then I'll make the line a little thicker as it gets over to the right here. You're placing this right on the horizon line. So you are trying to cover up if there's any gaps, for example, maybe your uh, wave and sky had a little bit of a gap. You can see mine does here. So I'm just making sure to put the purple right in between. Otherwise you can overlap if you need. If you need to overlap any colors at this point, you totally can. But again, hopefully you can see I'm trying to make it a little wider, a little larger as it gets further over. And I'm keeping a nice thin tip at the end, as pieces of land or islands do. They kind of get thinner um, as they get closer to the water, and then the water kind of eats it up. So we want to have a nice thin tip. Nice kind of wide area up here. You can make it kind of bumpy. Doesn't matter. As long as, get, as, as long as it gets just a little wider, a little taller as you go along. I'll give a quick minute just to make sure we're all on the same page before the palm trees, because those will be a few steps there. No more black either. Oh no, well brown's okay too. Um, hype in the chat for Lakeside Dudes. Oh, for subscribing for three months. Isn't it crazy? I've been doing this for three months, Lakeside Dudes. Isn't that wild? And you're not even the first one to subscribe for three months. A few others did. Isn't that wild? Thank you for doing that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and me anime. Thanks for the follow. I'm sorry if I, me, I anime. Thanks for the follow. I don't know if I missed you there. Probably did. My alerts are off because I'm doing a tutorial right now, but thank you for subscribing. Erin, how do I make my island not look like a blob? They always seem like blobs. Uh, maybe extending a little more and thinning it out. Um, and I guess I should say too, I think a key is also keeping the bottom part pretty flat. And then it's the top part that you kind of raise up. So rather than thickening from the bottom, you want to thicken it from the top, widen it at the top. So rather than bring it down, keep it flat and then up like that. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know, Brittany. All right. So we can do a few palm trees if you wish. If you'd rather keep your beach a little more empty, that's totally fine. But I thought the palm trees were a nice little addition. So I'm just going to grab a little more purple on that tiny, tiny little brush. And I like to do two palm trees. So I'm gonna stick one kind of near the middle of my island. And I'm starting with just a nice curve, a nice uh, kind of thin-ish curve here. It's not the thinnest, uh, thinnest line or curve in the world, but it's relatively thin because it's just very far away. Um, you can see I maybe, maybe uh, widened it just a tiny bit more on the bottom. Palm trees, they're typically pretty much the same width all the way up. I like to make sure there's just a little bit more width at the bottom where it's nice and strong, kind of holding onto the ground. So that's why I do that. But there's no reason to do a thin tip at the end or anything like that. It just kind of ends off. We'll be putting our palm leaves there anyway. One more hype for lakeside dudes. <laughs> If you'd like to throw on the second trunk at this point, go ahead. I'm going to do the uh, palm leaves first and then I'll put on the second trunk for you. If you want to do two palm trees like I am. 
So for palm trees, again, these are pretty far away, so you don't need to worry about making them super detailed, super clean, because they're so, so far away. I'm just using more purple on my brush. I'm starting at the very top where I ended off here, and I'm just gonna do a few more kind of curved lines coming out from that top area there. So they're all sprawling out their own ways. I'm trying to make them all about the same length. I'm gonna do like one, two, three, five or six five or six of them, just kind of evenly spaced. Well, guess that one's five, that's okay. Maybe there's a sixth right here, but whatever fits. You can see it's very customizable. Uh, you can always add more later if you need. Um, I would say they're all curving out one way and then down. So if it's uh, on the left-hand side, they're gonna curve left and then kind of down a little bit. If they're on the right-hand side, you can see it still curves right. They'll either curve up and right over right or down and right. They're all just kind of bending is what I'm trying to say. They're all very weighed down. They're all very heavy. And then to fill up the palm leaves, uh, what I do is I just do some small little strokes um, on either side of those lines. So let me show you nice and close here. So I'm starting on the base of the first leaf here. Again, these are all individual leaves, just using the tip of my brush. I'm going to start flicking a little bit outwards as I come down to the tip of the uh, leaf there. So I did a few flicks kind of coming down off of the leaf and then eventually I just keep the end just by itself just as a nice little tip there. I'll do the same on the other side just kind of flicking a little bit out and coming down to the end there. There we go. And I do that for every single one. There's a couple more here. Flick, 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 and I'm kind of just flicking my brush, right? I'm just kind of moving my bristles and going flick, a nice little quick flick. That'll get you some nice thin leaves, or thin tips of your leaves, rather, of your palm leaves. And again, like I said before, if you're um, kind of wondering how many leaves to put on, I kind of said maybe five or six, I ended up sticking with five. Um, I always recommend sticking with less than you think because it's way easier to put more in there, right? So I'm already seeing there's kind of a big gap right here. So once I complete all my leaves and see how they look, I'm gonna consider adding maybe one more leaf or two and you can do the same. If you feel like there's any gaps or anything, then you can add just one more or two more wherever you need. Yeah, I think I'm going to add one more here. And you can do the same or you can leave it the way you have it. Either one works. And then the last thing I try and look at is trying to make sure they're all about even in terms of length. I'm just looking in the camera and I can see they are not. <laughs> um, when I'm painting from the side, sometimes it's hard for me to see lengths and uh, yeah, perception. I guess as I'm looking from the side, everything's a little wonky. So I'm just gonna twist it this way to uh, fix that up to make sure they're all about the same, same length. And then that way they make more of a circular area if you go all the way around the tips, right? Rather than having more of an oval or having them kind of wonky different lengths. Just kind of beefing them up a little bit, making some of them a little longer so they all match about as best they can. They don't need to be exact, of course. I always say that, they don't need to be the exact same. But it's helpful to have them similar. A little better, a little better. Angela, Melissa, oh, maybe you're tagging your friend. And then Deborah, beautiful palm tree. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, palm trees are great. Um, uh, that was like my first uh, first ever tutorial under my name was the uh, palm tree there. It was a very different palm tree than the ones I'm doing here. Um, this one in the background was very like saggy. It was kind of, I don't know, There, there's just lots of different kinds of palm trees when you really start to research and look for references. I thought it was a very interesting looking one that I found online and tried to replicate. Palm tree branches, leaves are thicker, close to the base, right? Yes, that's a good point, Brittany. Um, I like to beef them up a little bit more in the base. So yes, a little wider. And then what they do is they kind of come down to a tip there. Not a perfect tip, of course, but they just become thinner as you described, for sure, for sure. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a second palm tree now. It's the exact same steps, but I will walk you through it again in case you need to know. I'll just kind of go a little bit quicker because I'm sure you probably know the steps at this point. Maybe some of you have moved on to your second palm tree already. But I'm just starting with another curved line for a trunk. This time I'm gonna push it the other way just to make it a little bit different. My boyfriend loves palm trees in the water, so I'm hoping this turns out good enough. <gasps> for birthday next week, oh my gosh, I'll keep the secret. <laughs> That's so exciting. Wonder what, I wonder if, um, yeah, there's anything else you can customize with. I mean, that would be really fun if you had like a favorite animal or something, you can somehow put it in there. I don't know. I'm sure you would think of some good ideas too. So again, just if you need a refresher, I'm just doing a couple curved lines coming out from the top there. And again, this one's uh, much closer to the edge, so you might have some leaves kind of falling off. You won't have to worry about those. And then it's the same thing, just kind of flicking on either side of those lines to help fill up the palm leaves. Again, as Brittany pointed out, that was a good point. Um, the leaves are a little bit thicker, a little wider in the middle. And then they come more to a point or they get a little thinner as they get closer to the end there. I'm just filling them all up the exact same way as I did before. Maybe a little thicker over here, there we go. And again, you'll also note too that the middle gets quite crowded in the end and that's okay. It's just nice and thick in there. All the leaves are starting there so it's going to be a little bit busier right in here, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll give everyone at least a minute or two there. I feel like I whipped through that second uh, palm tree a little quick, so just to make sure everyone's caught up, we'll give a little bit of time. I'm gonna love you and leave you. I need to try and get some sleep. Lisa, of course, no problem. I hope the rest of your stream night is great. Good night. Good night to you, Lisa. Have a great sleep. Subly, welcome in. Just popping in to say hi. No worries. Thanks for popping in, dude. Nice to see you. I'm gonna try and do a smaller custom shark painting. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. Again, I loved the idea of doing a little shark fin. I think that was a little fun idea too, but a separate painting would be very cool as well. Oh, and I missed your other message, uh, but I'm competing with you, Aaron, because I gave him one of your palm. Oh, okay, okay. I missed that, that's really funny. <laughs> he already gave him one of mine, now it's competition. I'm sure he'll love yours more. Please, please, please. Uh, will you be doing uh, this painting when I move? Uh, Amanda, so I probably won't be reteaching it if that's what you're asking. Usually I just teach the same, or not the same one, just the one, the one time. Um, but it'll be on YouTube for you, unless I'm misinterpreting something. When do you move? Is that pretty soon? I know you've been moving a lot of stuff around. Not sure when you're moving though. Oh, okay. I mean, I am doing it. Okay, I was gonna say, I think you know this already, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll be doing it when I move, gotcha, September 1st. Okay, 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 that makes way more sense. I was like, Amanda, I'm pretty sure you know I don't usually repeat, but that's okay. <laughs> all good, all good. So again, I'll give another minute just in case anyone's still working on the palm trees and we'll do our sunshine next. So we're getting all the nice background stuff done and then we can uh, get our nice foreground elements on. Can't wait for the sloth. I know I was thinking of you when I did it. So September 1st. Oh yeah, you'll be moved by then, right? I mean, you might be a little busy, in which case, you know, you can just wait for it on YouTube, but maybe you can join Friday, Friday. Uh, Lori, is it okay? Uh, I made the palm trees normal shades. Of course it is, yes. I love all your little emojis too, by the way. Um, yeah, you, um, if I didn't say it before, I encourage everybody to customize as you like. That's kind of the point. It's really beautiful to see kind of uh, what people interpret all the paintings as and what they add to it, um, making it a little more personal to you. So definitely, if you want normal trees, <laughs> uh, I assume even like pine trees and stuff like that. Of course, you can do whatever you like. Looking forward to seeing it. Uh, yep, Def, even if I'm not settled, I'd still do it. Okay, no worries. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, glad you're so excited about it, Amanda. I know a lot of you are. 
Yeah, I'm very happy I can do a sloth for everybody. <gasps> See? Yeah, Brittany's like, wait, a hammock in between the palm trees maybe? Beautiful. Why didn't I think of that? They're so perfectly placed. And it would be small enough too. It's just like a nice tiny little area. Go for it. Oh my gosh. I should have done that. Such a good idea. Such a nice little thing to add. I know, Joe's like, a hammock would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. What a great idea by Brittany. A little hammock just right in between. Right in between. Okay. So if you're done with the palm trees, I just have a quick little simple step. It'll give you again a couple extra minutes too, just in case anyone's catching up. Uh, we're just doing the little sunshine. So as a reminder, the sunshine is right about here. I like to put it just right where the wave is kind of curling. It's just kind of peeking through, right? Uh, and what I do is I mix together white with a little bit of yellow to make it more of a buttery yellow, just to keep it nice and bright on top. Uh, in terms of the brush you use, you can use really whatever you like. I'm actually going to switch to the medium round brush though. Um, I do like this one, even for smaller objects sometimes because it helps keep the paint very smooth. Uh, rather than kind of streaking it. If you're using a small brush, sometimes the bristles can kind of streak the paint a little too much, um, if that makes sense. It kind of like moves the paint around too much and it allows the canvas to show through versus if you use more bristles, it'll help smooth the paint out and keep it nice and thick. So that's my reasoning, but you can use whatever you like. So I'm just mixing yellow and white on my plate. I would say about half half if you want uh, ratios there. Yeah, Brittany, you've got some fans there. Hammock all the way. I want to be in the hammock. <laughs> Everyone's supporting you on the idea. I think it's a great idea. I would love to be in the hammock too. I see a couple comments on Facebook there. I'll be right with you. I'm just gonna do a quick little bright sunshine. So again, I like to put it right near the curl close to the water and close down to the horizon line too, as if the sun is perhaps setting or rising, whatever you think. And I don't make it too big. I just kind of use my brush. I flatten the bristles by pressing a little harder and I just kind of twirl it around. I kind of pinwheel it. Do, 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 do. Kind of like that. Again, I'm gonna look straight ahead here so I can get it a little more even. Painting from the side gives me some oval shapes sometimes. That's a little better, look at that. So again, using a medium brush allows you to kind of smooth out the paint a little bit better. It won't give you as many ridges. So that's why I recommend the slightly bigger brush, slightly bigger. All right, so Joan, I live in Newfoundland, have never seen a palm tree. I sure hope uh, birch trees grow on the, on this painting island. <laughs> it does now. Uh, Bob Ross has a great quote about just making the painting your own world and how you shouldn't worry about like how things are looking if they're, you know, what you would see in the real world because the painting is your world. So if your world has some birch trees by the beach, I'm into it and I hope you are too. Again, I'll look out for that one too. That's a nice fun customization, birch trees. Uh, Tina, thanks for doing this. Uh, I really enjoy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Christine says, thank you. You're welcome as well. Usually the thank yous come later. They're all coming early. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you for thank yous. Hammock completed. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Amazing. Oh, I didn't turn off that reminder. That's good. Oh well, oh well. So another quick minute, I just want to make sure once again, we're all caught up, even though this one was quite a quick step. Sometimes it takes a little bit to shape it out and to fill it in. So no rush, no rush. A sailboat, says Charlene. That's a great idea too. There's so many little things you can add to this. I love water, beach kind of lake paintings because I feel like the water is just open to so many different things you can do. Sailboat's great. You can do people swimming. Do a little seaplane landing in the in the tidal wave that we have, whatever you think. Sun's looking kind of sad. What's up with it? Is it kind of an oval? Mine was too at the start. <laughs> it was kind of an egg. <laughs> it's like a nice light yellow egg. It's kind of sad. 
I'm sure you'll get it. I'm sure you'll get it. An umbrella. See, yeah, like the and just generally the beach is like umbrella, people lying down, a beach ball. A little tiki bar, if you will. <laughs> its circle just looks sad, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe brighter? I don't know. If it just looks sad, not sure. Did you show the pic of your inspiration? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, there were a few very cool pictures online that I used as inspiration. They were real photos, but I think they were doctored um, in terms of like the saturation and stuff like that. But lots of very cool, like realistic looking photographs of rainbow paintings. Yeah. No, I didn't show that little wolf, but anyone who wants to type in just rainbow wave, I think that's what I typed in on Google Images. A lot of photos that people have taken of real waves and then uh, kind of up the saturation, maybe threw in some extra color editing uh, to make them a little more rainbowy. They're very cool. And then let me see here. Vasuda, thank you, Aaron. My daughter's enjoying it a lot. Oh, good, and learning a lot. Amazing. That's what I love to hear, enjoying and learning. Yes, best combo, thank you. Millie, I'm going to do it tomorrow as I was late joining tonight. No worries, Millie, no worries. It'll be up uh, immediately after uh, I'm done here and then eventually on YouTube. Put Lori, um, is it okay if my blending isn't good? Exa oh yes, if it isn't good or it's not perfect. Oh, you're fine. Uh, we're actually doing those steps next. We'll be adding all the nice little streaks on top and that'll help cover up any of the uh, not perfect blending. It's okay if anything's not perfect, honestly, Poot Lori, but um, especially this base layer, we're gonna be covering up a lot of it too. I think maybe it's because my wave is so dark with no yellow. Oh, okay, it's just like the wave's gonna eat him. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, mine's gonna be eaten too. <laughs> All right, let me see, let me see. So let's move on back to the painting here. So we're gonna be doing lots of streaking now. So if anyone joined me actually for the um, Toronto Pride painting, that was a while ago during Pride Month, June. Uh, I did a very similar technique in terms of like the water. I did all this kind of blending and then all these little waves in here. Um, and also the Niagara Falls painting, both of them were pretty similar in terms of the water technique I used. So you might kind of channel that if you were there for uh, those ones, but I will go through obviously everything step by step for those who weren't here. Um, but just, just kind of letting you know, similar steps. We're starting with some purple, even though we didn't use a purple base, I still put some purple waves on top because we can't forget about the beautiful color purple. It's my favorite color for those who don't know. Uh, and I do a mixture of two things. I do some of these kind of uh, more straight looking waves. They're kind of like horizontal with little bumps in them right in the middle, you know, just kind of like light waves, light waves. Do, 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 do. Um, and you can do kind of the curves as well. So the curves are all up here where the wave is literally curving around. Once again, you're just kind of thinking about the flow of the wave, right? It's kind of coming across, it's kind of coming over. So depending on where you are in the painting, you'll be doing different things and I'll lead you through what those things are. Uh, but yeah, we're starting with purple. We'll move along to other colors, but let's talk about purple a little more. <laughs> um, we can mix purple. We already learned by mixing red and blue together. And I do start with a little bit of a dark purple and then I'll make a little bit of a lighter purple as well just to get lots of different purples in there. So I've got a medium round brush. Still using the medium round brush. I just washed it off. And I'm going to add blue and red mixed together if you didn't have that mixed already. You may have had it mixed already from the island. That's what we just used it for, but in case you need more red and blue mixed together. Oh, CJ, don't worry about it. You're fine. <laughs> and win. <laughs> go enjoy, go enjoy. I didn't think they would be running, but I guess just virtually. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yes, Brittany, yes, I forgot. And they have similar waves to the uh, dandelion painting too. <laughs> You're right, you've learned now though. <laughs> okay, so I've got my nice dark purple on. Uh, and again, I'll lead you through those two kind of techniques here. So the first one for the waves is just doing these kind of horizontal lines with little bumps in them, little bumps in the middles. So I'm gonna use the tip of my brush with purple paint. And I'm gonna bring it across, do a little bumpy. Across again. Cross, bump, across. Across, bump, across. 
across, bump across. You can make those little bumps curves or a little bit more pointed, whatever you like. And I'm keeping those all on the right hand side. So kind of on the right hand side of the blue base there. And then up here, what we can do are some just quick curves. So I'm just loading up my brush with paint. I think it's important to use a little extra paint here, maybe a little more than you think, because we want some nice clean lines. If you use a little too, too little paint, a little too little paint, uh, it's gonna come off a little bit more dry. It's gonna come off very textured. Uh, and the look I have for the painting, it's more so clean. You have nice clean lines everywhere. So if you haven't, you can grab a little extra paint on your brush kind of curve like that. And again, I'm sticking just kind of the very right hand side of the blue more at the ends here. And because we're at the splashy part of the wave, part of the wave where it's kind of like coming down and breaking, you can also extend a couple of these a little further down just so you get some little, looks like kind of splashes of water separating from the main bit of water. So don't be afraid to do that every now and then, just a couple here and there. I'm keeping it minimal, minimal with the purple. It kind of stays very much to the right hand side. I'll be doing lots more with different colors later, but for now, just doing a little bit with the dark purple. Michelle, no, my battery is dying. Get a charger if you can, <laughs> but if not, it's okay. It'll be on. Uh, this video will be on later too. Probably about an hour, Michelle. So no worries. Okay. Oh, oh no, okay, lots of paint, lol. Yeah, it just helps with the cleanliness of the lines, right? If you have less paint, actually is a good example right around here, you can see it looks a little dry and textured. If you like the clean, kind of thicker lines, that's just using a little extra paint on your brush. Oh no, no, it's weird they have like a fake crowd. Oh, it'd be weird. I don't like the fake crowd. Just, just, just accept the fact that there's no crowd, you know? <laughs> COVID events, you know, they're all looking a little different now. Andrew, welcome in. How are you today? How are you? I'm doing an acrylic painting tutorial right now, but feel free to chat at the same time. I just go back and forth between teaching and chatting, so. Uh, and they are re-performing new NYCM villain. Oh, weird. Weird. Hmm. I'll maybe tune in a little later. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm good. Good, good. Hope your day was good. Sounds like it was. Did you do any art today? But I'm good. Yeah, I'm good too. I'm good too. Um, yeah, just painting a tutorial. I did more painting earlier today. So it's always a good day when you paint, as Bob says, honestly, honestly. And uh, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Oh, Joe, Aaron, I'm not feeling well. I'll tune in again when it's on YouTube. No worries. No worries. Please feel better, Joe. Relax. Um, yeah, have a nice relaxing evening and uh, you can catch up when it's on YouTube. No worries. Good night to you too, Joe. Thanks for coming in. But Lori, I'm doing good, I think. Excellent, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna move on to a nice light purple now. I like two shades of purple just to get lots of different shades of all the colors in there. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the same brush, my nice medium round, grabbing some white paint, mixing it into my purple. So it's more of like a medium to light purple. I wouldn't call this a lavender. It's more of a medium purple. I'm sure you'll see it when I apply it here. But same thing, I'm just adding a couple more of these little wavies, kind of going like across and doing a little bump. Across and a bump, across and a bump. And you can overlap them if you need to, if they need to overlap with the dark purple a little bit here and there, that's totally fine. And then maybe a couple curves up here as well. Again, same thing. If they overlap, that's fine. If they fill up a few more gaps, that's cool too. Just in and amongst your existing purple. So hopefully you see what's going on. We're starting to stack these up, starting to like fill up some space and we're just gonna add more and more and more and fill it all up. I was in the raid earlier with Kate. Yes, I recognized your name. I couldn't place honestly which raid came through because I've had a few raids today, but I appreciate you popping back in. Um, so you're watching Kate, she was gaming today, right? 
doing some Zelda. Do you usually watch her for art, I assume? And again, if you do any art, I'm curious too. Is this a, a near painting? Maybe a typo, Charlene. New painting? Let me know, Charlene. Let me know if I'm misinterpreting. Hornima, I'm doing good. Excellent, I'm so glad. It's so, uh, it's so nice to hear when people say they're doing uh, well and happy with their painting, that's excellent. Neat oops. Oh, <laughs> this is a neat painting. Oh, and I was misinterpreting too. I said, is this a near painting? This is a neat painting. Thanks, Charlene. I'm glad you like it. I'm really into the rainbow stuff recently, I think. Just lots of colors and stuff. I came back to have some chill paint time. Again, you said paint time, but that's okay. <laughs> I think you mean paint time. <laughs> Not providing pain time here, I hope. <laughs> I appreciate it though, Andrew. Thanks. Nothing like some good chill paint time. I agree. Oh, you get your bullet journal Tuesday. Amazing, Charlene. I'm excited for you. All right, guys, I'm going to move on to another step here. So I'm just moving around the color palette. If anyone's interested, if you're feeling like you know what to do, you want to go a little quicker, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just using now two different shades of blue to start filling up these areas here. So I'm going to use more of a medium blue. And then you can kind of see some very light blue poking out as well. I'll be doing that um, as well. So let's start with a nice medium blue. So I just washed off my brush and I'll be mixing blue with just a little bit of white to begin with. I'm calling this more of a medium blue. It's not super light, it's not super dark, it's just anywhere in between. <clears throat> Excuse me. And guess what? We're doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're just going to be going across with little bumpies down here. Uh, the only difference is placement. I'm starting to move, you can see, maybe a little bit over to the left. You can see I'm also kind of, you know, saying hi to the purple and going a little in between the purple too. It's all about these nice transitions, right? All these waves kind of go into one another to help with uh, moving them across, right? You can even do some a little higher up if you need to fill in gaps, of course. Again, overlap if you need or fill in gaps, it doesn't matter. And you can do some up here. So again, I like to go in and amongst the purple and then move a little further over too. Same thing, remember you can bring some down just to help clean up this area here, kind of making it a little more kind of split apart. Little droplets of water kind of dripping down from the wave. And some things might blend a little too. I'm not really purposely blending, but if you happen to overlap any paint colors that are still a little wet, so maybe the light purple for example, it might blend a little and that's totally fine. I find it more important though to look at the gaps and try your best to really get lots of these brush strokes in all of the gaps so you get lots of different brush strokes and therefore some texture and direction. Uh, Kate was playing Zelda today, but she's an artist like you. Oh, I know, Andrew, yes. I've actually tuned into her streams. I've been following her a while. We go kind of back and forth with raids sometimes. Yeah, so I was actually really excited to hear that she was uh, playing some games today just uh, for something a little different. And I like Zelda too, so it was cool, yeah. Have you been following her for a while, Andrew? Hello, purple, yes. Psycho, I couldn't I couldn't forget the purple. Even though we didn't have the, uh, the purple base, still necessary to add purple on top. Is it okay to use purple without mixing colors? Sure, yes. Pornima, yeah, and that goes for any colors. If you have them pre-mixed, you can use them. It might be a little easier. Um, so yeah, for sure, for sure. I just, uh, I use all the mixings because uh, I have limited paint colors and I, I work with limited paint colors so that people who follow along, they don't have to go out and buy all these things. They can just buy, you know, the standard five colors that I use or four and, uh, and yeah, and then learn how to mix along with me. So okay if my lines are thick. Oh yes, yes. I would say mine are pretty thick too. 
They're not thin, they're not thick, they're kind of in between. All right, everybody, I'm gonna move on to a new shade. I'm gonna do a lighter blue now. Uh, and from now on, whenever I'm doing like really light colors or just lighter versions of things, I try my best to keep them a little closer to the inside. So you notice how the light blue, I really made a point to put them kind of closer to the edge of the wave here. I didn't really add any down here, but more up here. And like greens, for example, they're all kind of in here, whites and light yellows. That's because I wanted it to be a little highlighted on the inside, right? Because that's where the light is, right in here. The light is kind of shining this way, kind of shining through. So yeah, any light colors, starting with this light blue, I'm gonna to start to maybe focus more on the edge of the wave. So here I go with the light blue, just stacking that on. Again, same thing, doing some curves coming down. You can see I'm getting a little further in too, and that's all right. And yeah, not too much. I'm trying to trying to hold back. I really like the light blue, but I'm trying to hold back a little bit here and uh, make sure there's lots of room for other colors as well. So yeah, light blue I would say is minimal. I don't add too much of that one. Yeah. I have follow Kate for a couple weeks or something like that. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Are you gonna paint some happy little trees like Bob Ross? Um, not his happy little trees, but we got a couple happy little trees right here. I know what you're talking about though. Um, I usually use his tree technique as inspiration for a lot of my trees actually. Uh, not in this painting, but for lots of others I have, so. Maybe another one if you want to tune in. Andrew, I do these a few times a week, actually. Two, usually two times a week, uh, Fridays and Sundays. But otherwise, I'm on Twitch a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, mine looks very separated. Hmm. Uh, you could fill it up. It's actually uh, OK. You can fill it up pretty easy, Brittany. It's, I think it's better to have it a little more separate. It's easy to kind of fill it up. Uh, but just keep in mind, too, it might fill up a little bit more with the other colors as well, so you don't necessarily need to do it now. This is pretty. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. All right, so let's have a look here. We can just start to compare a little bit. All right, so we're going to move on to the green next. So if you want to start washing off your brush, we're going to make now what I would call a medium green. So this is a nice dark green in here. Um, I would make this uh, more of a medium green on our plate here. So green as a reminder is made by mixing yellow and blue and I'm using the same brush, the medium round brush. So yellow and blue, any green that you just think is a nice bright, kind of regular, like I would call it grass green, anything nice and bright like that is good. Same idea, we're just going to do some little waves. That looks actually pretty light. I'm going to darken that a little bit because I do want to do a separate light green. So I'm just going to darken mine a tad. And same thing, I'm doing the little uh, you know, horizontal uh, lines with a little bit of a bump in them. Then I'm gonna make sure I'm filling up gaps. So I'm gonna make sure I do a couple up here to really fill up that space. As a reminder, you can move it a little into the blue as well. And just as a heads up, I think I just said it, but uh, we'll be doing two shades of green. So if you're wondering about kind of a highlight green, we will be doing a nice light green after this one. We're getting to the point too, where you might want to start to switch to some more curves here because the, the waves are kind of coming up or not the waves, the water is coming up into the wave. Uh, so you won't have as many of these horizontal little bumpies. You'll have more of the curves kind of coming up. So you can kind of switch whenever you want, maybe do a little bit of both in a certain area and eventually it'll all be curves. But I'm also going to do some up here, of course. Start to fill that up. 
Again, overlapping a little in the blue, kind of covering up some gaps there and also allowing them to kind of mingle and mix. I think that really adds to the painting, allowing the colors to kind of mingle with one another rather than having section by section. It's all about just kind of allowing them to blend into one another, not quite literally blending like wet on wet, but just blending in terms of section by section. So you get lots of different tones, different colors, kind of all in the same areas there. And I'll remind you, you can use these uh, colors to help shape anything out. So if you didn't like the curve, for example, that you had, use these greens or yellows or any other colors to kind of reshape any of the edges here, kind of piling on the side here, whatever you need. Um, is there any light blue on the bottom? Helen, good question. I did not put any. Um, there's no reason you shouldn't, but I was just looking at my original. It's just the medium blue. So the light blue is like this one here, and this is more of the medium blue. You could definitely put some like up here though, if you want a nice highlight. So just so you know that. I really kept it near the top though. Oh, Christy, gotta go to bed. Good night, good night, Christy. Have a good evening rest of your evening. So whenever you're ready, you can move right along to a nice light green too. So the light green, um, as I described before with the light colors, we're probably going to stick that more on the inside of the wave here where it might be hitting the light, you can disperse it maybe a little higher as well, but mostly on the insides kind of where the wave is breaking there. So if you wanna make some nice light green, you're just gonna use lots of yellow and you can either add that to your existing green or make a new one, whatever you like. So a nice lime green. And you can see, same way, I'm just using the tip of my brush, doing some nice curves. As I just talked about, I'm sticking them closer to the inside edge. They don't need to all stick on the outside edge, just maybe like close to it though. And I'll say again, I think it's pretty important to keep picking up new paint every, every stroke or two, just to keep them nice and clean. If you really start to like scrape off the paint, it might become a little too textured. It might just give it a little different of a look, which is okay if that's what you're going for. But if you like the more clean lines, I really recommend using uh, uh, more paint on your brush. Yes. And I'm gonna do a little on the bottom here too, just either some little wavies or some little streaks coming up. And just keep in mind too, you can always go backwards if you need. I'm just saying that because I'm realizing that maybe I have a little bit too much of, gap, of a gap in here. There's not a whole lot of green waves considering all the green base that I have. So if you ever need to go backwards, you can always just mix quickly the color you're looking for and just re-add it. It doesn't need to be in the exact order I'm doing. It does help uh, just to like help yourself transition from color to color. But if you do ever need to go backwards, there's no problem at all with that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just grabbing a little more green, streaking that on. Maybe a little more up here, the darker green. And 
Okay, you can kind of see it's all kind of coming together a little bit more each time. Every new color, it kind of stacks on top, blends it all together. We're getting the overall look coming together. I'll give another quick minute in case you're still adding the greens, any of those greens, and then we'll just move on to our next color. Our next color is going to be nice yellow. So if you don't have yellow on your plate, which I actually need some, you can get that ready. Yellow and white will be needed. Again, if there are any questions, I welcome you to ask them. Um, I know we're kind of doing a similar step pretty much uh, <laughs> the rest of the, uh, the rainbow here, but just in case anyone's wondering if something isn't looking right or needs any clarification, I'm happy to give a little more. But thus far, it's pretty much the same steps, just with different colors for the wave itself. Oh, Lee's saying good night, Christy. Oh, who is Lee? Oh, just another viewer. I think they are just saying good night to you because you said you were going to bed. Just having a little send off. All right, so I'm going to go on to our next color. Our next color is a nice yellow. Um, so I have it ready here, but just to review, I'm using the medium round brush. I'm using yellow mixed with a little bit of white. Again, I like to do that to brighten up the yellow a little bit extra. And same thing, I'll be doing these nice curves. So I think at this point, you're probably not doing any of these, you know, straight across with little bumpy lines. You're doing more of just the curves. So once again, I'm kind of stacking them in and amongst the green just to help those transition a little bit breaking up those areas a bit more as well. Curling up and around. Same thing up here, transitioning a little in the green area and then coming down. And I love the stacking in this painting. You can see as you stack it on top of each other too, it all adds. And hopefully you agree now that uh, <laughs> that background base, you can see how it's just almost completely disappeared. I could maybe add, a, excuse me, a little more down here, a little more of my foreground details to help cover up any blending that I didn't like, but I don't mind it. I think it's looking good down here. But just in case you guys have any blending that you're not really a fan of, just keep stacking on a few more little waves of different colors and it'll eventually disappear. And you can see, still trying my best to do, not adding a hair, but adding a couple little curvy lines that kind of sprawl out as well to break up that wave. Get a nice curl in there, it nicely curls in and then starts to go further out as well. So yeah, yellow is a pretty light color, so I didn't do two versions of yellow, I just did the one. Uh, what I'll be doing instead, I guess, for an extra highlight later is I'll be adding in a little bit of white, a little bit of white later on, later on. And Tasha, thanks so much for the follow on Twitch, welcome in. Mine looks nothing like it should, but we're going to get there if you got to kill the whole wave. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You will get there. Are you on the yellow yet, uh, Brittany, or is it a different color? Uh, next poot lorry after the yellow, uh, it'll be a nice orange. I'm gonna be doing a nice light orange. I really have three colors left in the wave. I have a light orange, uh, a pink, and then a white. And I think I'll be giving a little extra time if anyone needs to go back before we do our little surfboard. I'm just starting green because I have a teal and turquoise. Oh, a turquoise! Mmm, and finding the colors are very dark and not lighting. Oh, okay, okay. More white in there for sure. Turquoise is a good idea. That's one I didn't really add. I didn't really add a lot of tur- I didn't add any turquoise. I just had my blues. 
That'll be a nicer transition. I guess you said you were working with less colors, so that's a good idea, doing two teals, turquoises. That'll help fill the space a lot more. Good, good, good. Okay, I think that's been enough time. Let's go on to our nice light orange. That's my next color. If you're still working on a different color, just go at your own speed. I keep saying it, but a lot of the next few steps are just similar to what we've been doing, just different colors. So I can easily catch you up if you need a little extra time, but I think we're going at a okay pace here. So if you wanna make a nice light orange, I'll just be using lots of yellow with a little bit of red. And I do like to throw a little bit of white in there. It's the same theory as usual. I find the yellow to be quite, quite transparent. Oops, squeeze that out. Um, so even when you're using yellow to mix something like an orange, for example, sometimes I find it leaves a more of a transparent orange. So to make a nice bright orange, I use yellow, a little bit of red, and a little bit of white. So three colors in there. Okay, and same as usual. I guess the only difference now is that I'm starting to add less of these colors. You can see there's less room. So just to avoid cluttering them too much, I'm just adding a little less. Still the same idea. I'm definitely going uh, more in the middle now here. So um, I guess I should mention too, of course, there's no orange section. We didn't do orange section. We didn't do a pink section. So orange is going in the yellow section and maybe a touch into the green. You don't wanna to do too much into the green, just in case there's any wet green because orange and green won't mix very nicely together. So, you know, you can go inside the green section. I would just make sure you're not blending it a whole lot with any wet green, but mainly just kind of this yellow section here. And again, you can see I maybe bring it down a little bit down here. So it should be getting quite filled up now, especially because we're now in the middle section. There should be a lot of streaks happening. We don't have too many colors left. So just as a heads up. If you want a quick comparison, I'll throw that up here just as we're waiting another extra minute. There we go, see how it's coming together? There's still a little bit to do. And again, I could definitely fill it up maybe a little bit more, so maybe we'll take a couple minutes to do that before the surfboard. And we do want this area to dry anyway, so that'll be beneficial anyway. Okay. So let's do our pink next. So you can see we have some pink right here. We couldn't forget the nice kind of pink, I guess, red tone-ish. Um, it's just a nice hot pink, kind of uh, more on the left-hand side, maybe a little bit closer to the right. Uh, you could lighten it up a little bit if you want, just to add some nice light pink streaks as well, which I will do. So just gonna put that down. So to make a nice pink, of course, I wash off my brush first. Nice clean brush. I'm gonna mix red with a little bit of white, little bit of white. So I'm starting with more of a hot pink, just to be clear. So red with a little bit of white, a nice hot pink. Same thing, I'm gonna stack it pretty much where the orange is. The orange was hanging out in the yellow section, maybe a tiny bit in the green section. Again, pink and green don't mix well together, so I would avoid adding the pink right on top of any green blobs. But mainly kind of on this left-hand side, maybe a little bit coming inside, but I will be lightening this up to do a nice light pink closer to the light source here. 
And of course, feel free to customize. If you really like pink, you want a little more pink in your way, feel free to move it further down, further up. I just like to kind of stick to the rainbow look, so I'm trying my best to keep the colors mixing, but also a little bit more in order. Diane, cool, thank you, thank you. And Cindy, very pretty, thank you so much, Cindy. Just giving a quick minute in case anyone's still going there. Hmm, I still haven't figured out a painting for Sunday either. For those who, who are wondering, paint pouring will be coming up soon. I still haven't made like a uh, official supply list for that yet and kind of a plan for what we're doing. So I think that'll probably be next weekend-ish. Not that, sorry, not next weekend, the weekend after. Um, but yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen in case anyone's been watching for that. A paint pouring tutorial. Ooh. I'm looking forward to it, honestly. It was a lot of fun when I tested it out on Twitch the other weekend. It was a, it was a ball, actually. It was hilarious. <laughs> a lot of learning happening. A lot of learning happening during that one. Thank you, Charlene. All right, I'm going to do some light pink now. So light pink is a nice little simple add-on to the darker pink that we just did. You can just take your brush. It can be clean or dirty. I just kind of clean mine by habit, honestly. Um, but I'm just using white paint and I'm moving it into my pink, so I'm making a nice light pink now. And this is just for the nice highlight. Again, we wanted to keep the trend of keeping the lighter colors a little more in the curl there. So you can see a nice light pink, and I'm going to use that right on the inside there. You can disperse it, of course, in and amongst the hot pink a little bit. But mainly, I would say the point of this one is to be a little more yeah, on the edge where the light is hitting it. And I don't do a whole lot. You can see I just do it minimally. And that way we still have the nice yellows and oranges in there as well. Such a beautiful setting. Thank you, Groki. I hope, uh, again, I hope everyone's having fun customizing the setting too. This wave is not cooperating. What's up with it? Just the colors maybe? Just because you, uh, you had limited colors, not sure. Is it the inside of the wave, Brittany? Is it like, uh, like the edge, the shape? Gertie, welcome in. So pretty. Too bad I don't have acrylics. Maybe I can apply it to something else. You sure could, Gertie. Oh my goodness. Um, a lot of people follow along with me and they use different mediums. Um, a popular one that people have been using that I've been learning about is gouache. <laughs> um, I've never really used gouache before. I honestly didn't know it existed until about a month or two ago. Um, but a lot of people have been recreating my paintings using gouache because uh, it's kind of like a Kind of like a nice in-between, in my opinion, now that I know what it is, um, of acrylic and watercolor. It's kind of a little bit of both. Uh, so it kind of creates a, uh, yeah, a nice in-between. So feel free to try it with anything else. People do pencil coloring. They do um, pencil crayons, rather. They do uh, digital art with it. Yeah, really anything you got. Uh, Just Rich, thanks so much for the follow. Sorry if I missed you a few minutes ago. My alerts are off because of the tutorial, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. Seen that was fun. Good, Tina. Uh, Moving. Oh, I just missed it. Oh, no worries. Um, yeah. So it starts at 7 p.m. or started at 7 p.m. EST. Um, but this video will be available very soon once I end the live stream. You can actually watch it right back. So probably about 20 minutes ish, maybe a little less. So, uh, yeah. If you want to hang around, you're welcome to. And then you can actually replay the video after. So no worries. If you have any questions in the meantime, I'm happy to help you. All right. I'm still using the medium round brush here. I'm just gonna wash it off because we are using white as our next color. Nice white. Yes. Just wanted to double check. I was like, are there any more colors? I think it's just white left. So I'm just dipping a little bit of white onto the tip of my brush. And I do not add a lot of this white because I really like to keep it a little more rainbowy. Um, but I think I mentioned before, I like to put some white, especially kind of on the edge here just for an extra little highlight. So along the edge, maybe a little on the inside, not a whole lot though. Just a nice little extra bit there. Just trying to make sure I'm getting clean white, keeps mixing in. So again, you can bring it in a little bit. I just wouldn't bring it all the way into the wave. 
And I would use this minimally too, because again, I think it's more of a rainbow wave. The white just adds a nice little highlight to the inside a little bit more. You can even do a little bumpy wave here and there if you want. Hmm. It's hard for me to stop adding, can you tell? <laughs> I feel like we all have that to a sense. We all want to just keep going and keep going and keep going. Uh, Kalevo, thanks Aaron. No worries, no worries. This wave though, <laughs> what's up with it? Let me know, Brittany, and I'll try and help ya. Uh, I'm done. Oh, but Lori, you're all good. Wow. Quick, quick, quick. Moving. I'm from Las Vegas. Okay, so um, yeah, you're three hours behind me. So it would have been 4 p.m. that it started. So yeah, all my time. Sorry if I'm not making that clear. I'm trying my best. Uh, trying to make it clear. All my times listed are EST. Uh, so it'll be, I, th I think you're three hours behind me for Las Vegas. Maybe two. I think three. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you can let me know what the conversion is. And uh, yeah, I usually start at 8 p.m. EST or 7 p.m. EST. Usually it's 8 p.m. Friday, 7 p.m. Sunday. Missed with the time. Yeah, it's just time zones. Oh, you're done too. Cornelia, excellent. Looks awesome. Thank you, Nubin. Thank you. Now I'm done with Lori. Oh my goodness. Pornima, can we leave if we're done? Oh, of course, you can leave anytime. <laughs> For whatever reason, it's fine. Yeah, you're not gonna be uh, punished or anything. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll be actually doing one more step though. I'm doing the nice surfboard. I don't know if you finished the surfboard yet, um, but yeah, you, if you need to go or if you're all finished, you wanna, wanna skedaddle, it's totally fine, totally fine. Uh, Linda, sorry I'm late home, so we'll paint tomorrow. No worries, no worries. Thanks for popping in, Linda. I appreciate it, looks good. Thank you, thank you. It's fighting me. I'm losing. <laughs> keep going, Brittany. Keep going. And again, let me know if um, even if you want to send me a quick picture or anything. I can always uh, look at that. Maybe after I'm done the initial steps, I can stick around and help you a little more. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. <laughs> it's fighting me. Oh, dear. Fight back. Fight back at the wave. Okay. So I just want to point out the last step here and I'll, I'll give you another minute or two in case anyone's adding white, but also if you need to go back at this point to um, add any more color because uh, you can kind of see, I can't really see my painting there, can you? Try to move it over. Come on over. There we go. I think this one's maybe a little more filled up. I maybe did a few extra streaks on top. Uh, it's all the same colors in same order. It's just I probably added more. I'm just kind of looking in here especially. In here especially, right? So if you need to ever go back, especially at this point, I would probably do it now. You can go back and re-add any colors if you think anything looks a little blank or just, you know, not as rainbowy, not as bright. You can add some more waves of different colors in there. So I'll just give another minute or two if you are. Uh, and then I'll get to the surfboard tip. That is going to be the last step. And that's optional too. I mean, like I said before, if you want to customize, you can customize by uh, leaving it blank. You could customize by doing a little shark fin or something else there. It really doesn't matter, but I will teach you how to do kind of the shape of that surfboard for you. Uh, Arthi, thank you very much. I watched on and off, looks awesome. Nice, we'll try tomorrow. Excellent, yeah, and Arthi, if you have any questions, maybe as you're watching on and off, if I didn't explain anything, just let me know. Um, but otherwise, you can enjoy tomorrow. And hello to Arthi, you're probably here watching now because you're in the future, ha. Huh? Uh, what? No punishment? What's, what's what I joined for? Oh my goodness, Cindy. <laughs> Not the tribe you're looking for. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Command tribe. <laughs> Three back West Coast. Yeah, that's what I thought too, Helen. I was like, Las Vegas, it might be on the cusp a little bit, but I think it's three as well, yes. I know like Vancouver, LA, all of that is three. And then Las Vegas, I thought maybe might be on the cusp, but you're probably right, it's three. Oh, gonna watch till the end is mesmerizing. Oh, I love every color. I know, I love it too. 
Thanks, Moovin. Yeah, I, uh, again, I said it at the start, I, I usually watch painting tutorials like Bob Ross, for example, and I don't paint along, I just like watching them. It's mesmerizing, as you said. <laughs> oh, no worries, Psycho. Um, have a good evening, okay? Thanks for popping in, appreciate it. Glad we got your purple in here. <laughs> yes, Gertie, that's correct. <laughs> that's Twitch chat's humor right there for you, okay? <laughs> And Sheikah, thank you so much. I tried, oops, I tried to follow along with you on the flower and I was not so neat for me like you. Oh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed anyway. I'm glad you're doing with you. Were you following along this one too? The flower, yeah, that was Friday. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed in general. Thanks so much for saying that. Three hours, gotcha, okay, moving correct, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I think it's time for the surfboard. Again, if you want to customize, you can customize by leaving it off, adding something different, shark fin, swimming person, dolphin jumping out, a dragon, whatever you want. I'm going to do a surfboard. So I'm just going to shift this carefully. There we go. All right. And of course, surfboard, you can do whatever color you want. I stuck with a classic white. Um, I actually looked up just surfboards on <laughs> Google Images and I pretty commonly saw the white one. So I chose white and I gave it a little bit of a pink uh, feature, kind of a little decal on the edges there. So I'm gonna keep using the medium round brush. You could use the tiny one if you prefer. Some people like to sketch things out and then paint it inside. So whatever you prefer, but I'm just gonna go for it with a nice medium round brush. Just going to pour a little more white paint, nice clean white. Volcano plate makes that very difficult. Da, 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 da. And yeah, I put the surfboard just in the bottom corner. Again, my um, my vision with this one was to have kind of the view of the surfer a little bit. So you have just the tip of the board uh, just kind of coming in from that bottom corner. So nothing too, too crazy. I'm just going to start right around in the bottom corner area here, maybe a little higher up. I'm going to start with a nice curve kind of out and up. So right and up. So it kind of flips up a little bit as surfboards do. They have a little bit of a tip at the end. Oops. Of course you show up when the tribe command happens. It's like you're calling. You're humor, man. And then to complete the surfboard, I'm just going to curl it around. So the tip is a little bit curved. It's not like a pointy tip. It's just kind of curved. Then you're coming back down. You're not going to meet at the bottom corner. You're just kind of coming down. You're curving down to the bottom of the canvas. Fill that in whenever you're ready. Sometimes it helps to see the overall shape to fill it in as well. If you need to adjust, you can. So I think maybe mine is a little too curvy. I think I want to flatten it out. So I'm just going to make it a little flatter this way. And you can do the same. You can just kind of alter on the edges as you need until you think it looks a little more surfboard-ish. Surfboard-like. I think that's closer for sure. Again, customize to whatever color. I'm using white, and then I'm going to add a little bit of a pink detail around the edge. Three hours, yes. Maybe even want to get more detailed with your surfboard. If you actually surf, I'd be interested to know. Um, <laughs> maybe you want to add some little stickers on there. I feel like a lot of people cover up their boards with a lot of stickers kind of like brand names and things like that. You can get real custom with it. Just an easy little thing to kind of doodle on, you know? Alright, so when you have the white on, again, the last little step here is just adding a little bit of detailing to the surfboard. Again, totally optional, but if you like the one I did, I'll show you how I did it. So I'm just on my plate here, uh, mixing together a nice light pink. So we learned that already, but just in case you forgot, we have white, 
and we just need a little bit of red. Okay, so what I chose to do is I just chose to do a pink border. I didn't stick all the way to the outside. I left a little bit of a white edge, right? So I'm just using the tip of the brush trying to make a nice clean pink line. Kind of going around the surfboard, but again, leaving a little bit of a white gap as well. Just like that. So again, it's just a nice little decal all the way around. Gives a little bit more shape to the board maybe, but honestly, I just kind of like some pink. So I put some pink on there. There we go. Add your favorite color, whatever it may be. What did I miss, Sarah? I was eating dinner. Oh, Andrew, we uh, think, I don't know when you left, but we just kind of added all the other kind of warmer colors. I think you were maybe talking to me around the green yellow stage. So we did some oranges, some pinks some whites in there, and I just add a little surfboard. Yeah, the last little extra feature of the painting. Okay, so guys, this is, uh, that was the last step there, actually. Um, so at this point, um, I can help you out if you have any questions. I was helping you the whole time, but I'm especially available now. Um, I would just recommend if you are all done, a lot of you seem to be done early too. Um, but if any of you are still hanging around, you can always sign your painting as a final bonus step. I always recommend that. So if you want to, you can even like sign your surfboard. That would kind of be a cool idea. Maybe I'll do that just for funsies. It's like you're putting your signature on your surfboard. Cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, so yeah, you can you can sign your painting to kind of finish it off. Uh, like I said before, if you feel like anything's looking empty, you can always go back, just add some colors in there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that is the completed painting. Um, so as I just said, I'm here to answer questions if you need. If anything wasn't working out for you or maybe you fell a little behind and need a little extra help, that's what I'm here for right now. Um, but otherwise, I'll say a few little quick announcements so everyone knows... Uh, you know, where to find this video if they need it or kind of where to post photos and stuff. So I guess I'll start with that. First of all, if you finished the painting tonight and you'd like to share your final photo, I would love to see it. I'm sure everyone else would love to see it too. Um, I'm just going back to Facebook here on my laptop to open up the event page for everybody. So whenever you're finished, you can navigate back to the event page and you can post your lovely photo of your lovely painting for all to see if you're comfortable sharing. Uh, I just need to open up the permissions for the page real quick. Uh, but that's where you post it. You can also post it on Discord if you like. Uh, so yes, thank you, Groki. You just linked all those social things so much. Uh, you can click the little Discord button there and there's a little art share channel that will work as well. So two spots you can go. Uh, if you are looking for any of my past tutorials or if you're looking for this one after I'm done, it will be on Facebook. Uh, temporarily, but most of them or all of them eventually move to YouTube. Okay, so you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com. There was some good old paint in there. YouTube.com slash Erin Bun Paints. Uh, that's where all the painting tutorials eventually end up. So it's always easiest to check there, I would say. Uh, otherwise, again, Facebook and Twitch temporarily will have them immediately. Uh, if you're looking to support me today through uh, this free tutorial and all the other free tutorials I do for everybody, um, I appreciate it. Um, I have a uh, PayPal link set up and I also have an Interact e-transfer email. Uh, those are all in the Facebook event description. Uh, thank you for those who uh, continue to support me. Thank you so much. Uh, and then if you're looking for the next tutorial, uh, it is going to be this Friday at 8 p.m. EST. It's always EST. Um, we'll be doing the little sloth painting. I uh, displayed a little earlier, but just in case one more time, if you want to see, this is what we're doing 8 p.m. this Friday, 8 p.m. EST on Friday. So just like this one, I'll lead it through you step by step, through for you step by step, and uh, you can follow along or just watch and have some fun, whatever you think, whatever you think. So I'm just going to take a peek at the Facebook comments here and then the Twitch comments and go back and forth a bit and make sure everyone's taken care of. Do, 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 do. Okay, Lynette, thank you. You're welcome. Heather, as per usual, awesome painting. Oh, I'll see you Saturday morning. Thanks for joining in, Heather, as always. Joan, you're very welcome as well. 
Charlene, thank you. Those fun, beautiful colors. Thank you. Have a great week. I'll see you Friday. Eight. Excellent. Keep smiling. Don't forget to eat. I know. Thanks for reminding me. What's one of the streams over? Can you please wait? What? <laughs> CJ, please describe what you're saying. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will consider. Oh, thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. Yeah, so my Instagram is where all of my tutorial paintings can be found. So I post those, um, I guess, a little before they happen so you can kind of see what's coming up. But also, if you're curious what else I've done, they're all there. They're all there. And good night, Charlene. Yeah, Twitch peeps and Facebook peeps. Yay! My paint got too blended, so I'm gonna go back adding streaks. Yeah, no worries, Helen. That can happen. It can maybe blend a little bit much if it's all very wet. Um, I, I personally like a little bit of blending, but I think you're right. If you want to add a few more like prominent streaks, it would be best just to like let it dry a little bit. You can even wait like probably 20 minutes and you'd be good to go. Thanks for the very long stream. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> oh yeah, Andrew. Ah, buddies. Yes, Gertie, thanks for joining in Discord. Catch you on your streams. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, CJ, I'll, uh, I'll try to whip some out. It's getting to be a long one though today. Ruby, thank you so much. Lots of learning today. Oh, good. I'm glad you learned and enjoyed the lesson. Excellent. Enjoyed the session. So I'll just uh, give another minute or so if you have any quick questions. I'll be signing off of Facebook. I'll be staying on Twitch just for a few extra minutes. And then, uh, yeah, I'll be off. So again, Friday. And uh, again, if uh, anyone wants to see me before Friday, though, I'm on Twitch all the time. And I was originally going to have some days free, but plans changed, so I think I might actually be streaming a lot this week. So I'll uh, I'll post a new schedule on Facebook, Discord, everywhere else where I usually post it, on Twitch itself if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be like Tuesday, Wednesday, and then back at it Friday as well. You're welcome, Wendy. I'm so glad you enjoyed. Have a good night. <laughs> True, I might, CJ. Honestly, I, I probably just, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long one. <laughs> I'm feeling a little tired today. <laughs> uh, Andrew, how long have you been streaming? Uh, three months now? On Twitch, I assume you're asking. June, July, August. It's been just about three months. People are hitting their three month uh, anniversary for subbing. Yes. The wave one. No, keep fighting back. Keep fighting back, Brittany. I'll see you next week, Andrew. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Good night. Jackie loved this painting. Excellent. Thanks so much. See you Friday. I'll see you Friday, Jackie. Get her done. Yeah, I will. Don't be worry. And Andrew, yeah, I'm on all the time. I'm, uh, I'm really trying to dedicate a lot of time to this. So lots and lots of days that I'm on. Many, many days. Okay. Facebook, I see you've quieted down. I see some of you signing off, continuing to sign off. So I'll just say one more time, uh, thank you for coming. If anyone has questions even after I sign off, feel free to uh, private message the Facebook page or any of my other social medias. I try and check all of them as much as possible. But again, really appreciate you guys coming out today. It's always so much fun. So thanks for coming. And I will, oops, I will see you at the next one. Okay, bye-bye.